before I dive deeper into the uh, machine learning products from Google, I'd like to discuss what are the differences between AI and machine learning and neural network, those buzzwords. AI, it's an, there's no scientific definition what is AI, but you can say it's a technology or science to make things smart or uh, make this smarter computer, like the autonomous driving car or letting computer drawing a beautiful picture. Uh, yeah. And there has been many approaches to realize the vision of AI, and one of them is machine learning. This is a kind of the paradigm shift of programming. So usually if you want to build a new IT system, you have to hire uh, programmers to write the uh, program code that instruct computers how to solve the problem. But instead, now you can just use data instead of human programmers to program your computer. So you can just put more and more data to the, the computer so that computer somehow tries to find best way to solve the problem. And there has been so many different algorithms for machine learning, and one of them is the neural network. And if you have more and more deeper uh, layers of neural networks, that is called deep neural network or deep learning. And at around 2012, we have been seeing a breakthrough has been happening in the area of neural network. So that's why Google has been spending so much amount of resources and investment in the area of neural network. So let's take a look at how neural network can solve a problem by, by using this fruit problem. If you have a customer, and imagine that you are, you are a programmer for the customer, and your customer asks you to classify these fruits as an apple or an orange. What kind of program code with Java or C or Python, anything, to classify these fruits? Maybe easiest way to look at the uh, color of pixels. If it's a red, it must be apple. If it's an orange, it must be orange. But your customer comes up to you, come, comes to you again and asks you, sorry, in the production system, the performance of a camera is not great, so the image would be like this, monochrome. What kind of program code you would write? to classify these as an apple and orange. In this case, you have to look at the shape or patterns or uh, texture of those images. And then your customer comes to you again and asks, if you can do that, do the classification with the, the apples and oranges, maybe you can do classify on these images too. Can you do that with writing Java code or C code, anything? These looks like mobs or bloom or something, but if you're carefully looking at some of these images, there are some sheep dogs. You know, the images at the left, top left or images at the right bottom, they are not mobs, they are dogs. How do you classify these images? Actually, by using Cloud Vision API, you can get a fairly high accuracy on classifying these images. In any machine learning algorithms, it's almost impossible to get 100% accuracy. So the accuracy would be something like the 70, 80, 90, 95, or 98. But it cannot be 100% in most cases. But still, the Cloud Vision API does a great, a decent job on classifying these images as a dog or, or a mob. And how does it do that? How neural network works to classify these images or any kind of data. Actually, net neural network is not dedicated for image classification. It's just a function, function in programming language or mathematics. So you can put any kind of data to neural network to do, uh, to, uh, uh, to neural network work to solve your problem. For example, if you put uh, images of cats and dogs, you can train the function to classify these images as a cat or dog. And you can replace these cat images or dog images with any other data you want. For example, if you have a database, Oracle database or MySQL database with the customer transaction data from the e-commerce website, you can try, you can try the uh, convert those, the customer transactions into a bunch of numbers called a vector or matrix and use neural networks to crash by what customers would be the premium customers or what customers would be the uh, spamming or cheating customers or the, the uh, spammers. So that, is what, that could be one example of use cases of a neural network. Let's see how neural network, work, neural network can solve your problem uh, with the uh, demonstration video. So let's take a look at the video. This is a demonstration called TensorFlow Playground, where you can build the real neural networks inside your browser. 
So anyone can uh, Google, Google uh, search this with the keyword neural, uh, what is that? TensorFlow Playground. So anyone can play with it. So you are seeing gradually neural network can try to way to classify uh, the, the data points on the 2D space as an orange spiral or the blue spiral. So in this case, you don't have to write any uh, program code by yourself, like a Python or C or Java code. Instead, what you have to do is put more and more data to the neural network. So neural networks tries to find what is the best way to classify this data uh, as an, the uh, orange spiral or the blue spiral. So if you spend like a few minutes, like one or two minutes, the neural network could be fully trained so that it can classify the data points into an, uh, one of those, these spirals, just like we do uh, by using human instinct. See? And you can extend this technology to solve many other kinds of the problems, such as the image recognition. For example, if you have a handwritten uh, te the images, handwritten text images, with 28 by 28 pixel images, you can flatten those pixel data into a single vector with 784 uh, pixels or data, and you can put those data into the neural network directly. Actually, this is not a network, uh, this is a, a single layer neural network, so the most simple neural network design, but still you can get a decent uh, recognition accuracy, such as the 80% or 90%. So if you train the neural network with this pixel, uh, this pixel data, the neural network can be trained to uh, determine which pixels you have to look at to determine whether the uh, images should be on digit eight or digit six or digit zero. And if you have more and more layers between input data and the output layer, that is so-called deep neural networks or deep learning. And by doing so, you can get much, much higher accuracy. And sometimes you can get the higher accuracy than humans. So, for example, in this case, uh, you have the uh, uh, tens of or dozens of the uh, uh, hidden layers between input data and output data, so that each neurons inside hidden layers can be trained to recognize simplest patterns, such as the, uh, as you can see, the patterns on the left side, or the complex textures or colors, or a part of objects like a nose of a dog or the wheel in an automobile. But well, finally, you can have the neurons that can recognize a whole object, like an automobile or flower or wedding party. That is so-called deep neural network. And Google has been using these technologies for implementing over 100 production services and projects, including Google Search and Android Maps, Gmails. If you are using Google Search every day, that means you are using deep learning from Google every day. Because in 2015, we have introduced, introduced Rank Brain, which is an algorithm based on deep learning to determine the ranking of the search results. Which one should be the first, which one should be the second. And now we are trying to externalize the power of the machine learning running on Google Cloud, uh, from the Google uh, machine learning services from the cloud. The first uh, part of the product is so-called machine learning APIs. That doesn't require any machine learning expertise or the knowledge. You can just upload your own images, audio data, or text to the API, so you'll be getting the result within a few seconds. So let's take a look at a few examples of those uh, the APIs. First, we'd like to show a video of the Vision API demonstration. So in this demonstration, you can go to the product page to the, to, of the uh, Vision API, so anyone can drop your own images without uh, spending any money. It's available free. So if you drop the uh, sheep dog images to the uh, API, you can get the result like dog or dog like mama, mama. So let's go to the next video. Yeah, we have another video. This is an example of the demonstration of the speech API and natural language API. So if you press button and speak to the microphone, then it can start recognizing your voice in real time at high accuracy. Just like the voice recognition you have in the Android devices. And once you've got the result, you can copy and paste result into the another API, which is natural language, uh, natural language API, NRA API. That allows you to do many different analysis on the text, such as the entity analytics, sentiment analytics, and syntactic analysis. So by pressing the button, you can get the result of the entity analysis 
uh, by, uh, so that can extract the nouns or product names of the company name from the, uh, your result, or sentiment analysis, whether the statement is saying anything positive or negative, or syntactic analysis, which are the part of the text of each word, noun, verb, adjective. So you don't have to hire expensive natural language processing researchers or data scientists. You can just use the API. So that was the machine learning APIs that requires no machine learning expertise. You can just start using the APIs from today. But sometimes you want to customize the machine learning or neural network models by yourself, by using your own data, uh, specifically designed for, your, for solving your, the business model. So that is, uh, to solve that problem, we provide TensorFlow, which is the open source software for machine learning development. TensorFlow is the open source uh, machine learning development tool used inside Google for developing any new machine learning or AI-based services. And we have open source in November 2015 that is created by the Google Brain team. And the benefit you could get with TensorFlow is scalability and portability. So you can start trying the, the product TensorFlow by using your own Mac or Windows. And the TensorFlow has the sample code uh, like the classifying the handwritten text as digits, uh, that could be run on Mac or, or your Windows because it doesn't require any much computing resource. But you will find that the training the neural network model or deep learning model can take so much computing power or so long time if you really want to bring these solutions into production quality. So that's where you want to use the GPU from NVIDIA or maybe uh, dozens of GPUs or hundreds of GPUs to do the distributed training with production data. But still, you don't have to change your code with TensorFlow because TensorFlow is designed to be scalable. So you can just copy your TensorFlow code and your training data, copy it onto the cloud, where we can provide the tens or hundreds of GPUs. Uh, so so it, uh, it's scalable. And once you have finished training your model, you can copy the model. It's just some and tens of megabytes of data, or maybe hundreds of megabytes of data. You can copy that data, the model, to the uh, smaller devices, such as the mobile phones, or embedded systems, or Raspberry Pi, where you can learn TensorFlow, uh, specifically TensorFlow Lite, uh, to uh, learn your trained model, to solve your, your problem with smartphones, or the embedded systems in your factories, or any environment where you cannot get the, uh, any internet connection. So with those benefits, TensorFlow get the, um, the popularity in the open source industry. That is the most popular framework for deep learning in the world. And the many largest companies, enterprises, and the startups, and even individuals are starting to use TensorFlow to build POCs or production systems, such as Airbus, Arm, Dropbox, Intel, IBM, uh, the Twitter. Those companies are really uh, deploying the TensorFlow in their systems. And even the cucumber farmer in Japan has, has been using TensorFlow. I, ha I have taken these pictures by myself about one and a half years ago. And uh, there are three farmers in the picture. The one guy in the middle, he has parents who has been doing a cucumber farming for a long time. And he started helping his parents cucumber farming three years ago. And he found that the most tedious task, time consuming task for cucumber farmers is classifying the cucumbers into nine different classes at high accuracy. His mother spent eight hours a day for just for classifying cucumbers, thousands of cucumbers. And he didn't want to help that. So instead, he downloaded TensorFlow and built his own TensorFlow-based uh, cucumber sorter. So you can put the cucumber on the plate. So the Raspberry Pi that learns the TensorFlow can classify cucumber into nine different classes. And he built this robotics by himself, and it costed only $1,500. So you don't have to you know, pay like millions of dollars to the systems integrator to build this kind of high quality, high accuracy image recognition system. You can just have a, just an individual, you know, uh, the farmer, who are enthusiastic about applying deep learning to, for solving their problems. So that is the booming of the TensorFlow community and ecosystem right now we are having. But if you want to bring the technology and TensorFlow into production to solve your own enterprise problem, 
there are some uh, problems you will be seeing. There are three problems. You have to have the large data set, large training data set to train your neural network model. That is actually one of the downsides of using deep learning. Deep learning requires uh, uh, many uh, the training data set. And you have to build a good model on TensorFlow. Maybe sometimes you have to hire a data scientist to do that. But the largest problem is the uh, lots of computation. You need to buy more and more GPUs uh, to do the uh, large scale distributed training to bring the technology into production. So that is, the, that is the reason why we provide Google Cloud as a solution uh, for the data scientists and machine learning users. We call our data center as the data center as a computer. That means it's not just a bunch of machines in a building. It's a massively powerful uh, computers. So you can, uh, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the networks and middlewares, so any software engineers at Google can learn his or her a program called applications on hundreds of machines with you know, executing just uh, one line of the uh, container, co container co command. So that is the reason why the Google Cloud has uh, so di differentiated from the other cloud. So what will be the result when you learn the uh, TensorFlow on the large scale distributed training environment on Google Cloud? The result is much, much shorter training time, like 40 times faster or sometimes 300 times faster than the other developers. Right now, if you are trying to use the uh, deep learnings, you have to spend like a few days or some, some people are spending a few weeks to finish their training with production training data. But for Google engineers, you have to only spend a tens of minutes, like a lunch time. If you go to the lunch and going back to the, your office, then your training has finished. That's the most important factor or the biggest reason why Google has been so successful on deploying, uh, on deploying the technology into production. We even designed our own customized uh, LSI or ASIC called Tensor Processing Unit or TPU. This is not a CPU or GPU. We de designed our own processor just for running TensorFlow or a massive, amount, massive amount of the uh, matrix operations uh, between the matrices and vectors. And now we're externalizing all the power of the crowd that learns the TensorFlow as a product called ML engine or machine learning engine. So you don't have to take care of the, all the GPU instances or TPU instances by yourself. All you have to do is try out TensorFlow and upload your TensorFlow code to the ML engine with your training data, and that's it. And Google take care, takes care of the, all the uh, cluster management or failure management, everything. And also we provide the hyperparameter tuning so that allows you to shorten the training time much, much uh, shorter. So let's take a look at the, uh, some of the real world example how, of the customers who are already using TensorFlow and ML engine. Oh, sorry. Uh, the company like Airbus, AXA, SMFG is on the mega bank in Japan. Uh, Coca-Cola, they have been using TensorFlow for solving their real problem. This is a project called Global Fishing Watch. That is a project for preventing overfishing. And the project is collecting over 200,000 of the vessels and the GPS, uh, they are tracking the GPS position of the 200,000 vessels in real time. They, have, they are collecting all the GPS positions uh, stored on the Google Cloud storage and use the, uses the cloud data flow to do the batch processing and then uses the TensorFlow to ML engine to extract certain patterns from the movement of those vessels or ships in the oceans. So what do you get? You can understand, easily count how many ships are actually doing the fishing in the, each ocean by looking at the movement of the GPS positions. Is it doing trawl fishing or long line fishing or path sand fishing? This is another customer who are using TensorFlow and ML engine uh, for solving their problem. That is QP. The, one of the largest food manufacturers in Japan. They were trying to find a bad potato piece, the potato block with the black color or the, uh, the bad shape. But because they are using the very high quality uh, ingredients, it's really hard for the, uh, it has been really hard for the existing image recognition system to find out the bad potato cube. So they have has been using human workers to watch out the, the, uh, the all the, the uh, potato cubes coming on the belt conveyors all the day. 
But when they tried TensorFlow, then they were able to get much, much higher accuracy than the existing solutions. You can hear the sound. So you heard the sound. It sounds like Super Mario Brothers, but it's not Super Mario Brothers. That ring sound tells you the position of the butter potato cubes coming on the belt conveyors. So now the human workers don't have to watch out all the day. You have to, you know, to listen to the sound and pick up the butter potatoes whenever you hear the sound. So it's much, much lightweight task. And so that they were able to reduce the cost of the human operators significantly. Lastly, I'd like to show the Oknet case. Oknet is the largest a used real-time auction provider in Japan. They are handling over 5 million cars every year, but the largest challenge for their the users, the dealers, car, used car dealers, is the uh, crash buying those images for each car. For every each car you want to enter into the auction, you have to take 20 different images from front or side or back, or the part of the car, like a wheels or steering wheels, tires, and put the tags or labels on each images. And so that takes over 15 minutes or 20 minutes by human operators. So that they tried using TensorFlow and ML Engine to build their uh, the, uh, customized image classifier for the used cars. So they have used the uh, Inception version 3 model with the transfer learning techniques so that they were able to reduce the number of the uh, photographs or images to train the uh, model for for each car model. You only have to have 200 images for each car model to crash by those cars at high accuracy. And also, they were able to use the machine learning engine, or ML engine, to speed up the training time significantly. They were able to get the 86 times faster training time. So end result for the business is the much, much shorter operating time. So they were able to shorten the operation time for enter the car into the auction from 15 minutes to three minutes. So let's take a look at the video. So this is the actual systems. So you, uh, you can upload 20 different images for a car uh, from front or side or tires or part of the cars. And then the systems start crash finding these images. But important point of this project is that the Ocnet didn't have any expertise on machine learning or deep learning when they started this project. So they were able to find the best partner from the community of TensorFlow in Japan. So they spent three or four weeks with the expert in the community. So they were able to learn how to build the production quality system with deep learning and TensorFlow. And now this system is uh, deployed in the production environment from last December, uh, by only by the IT engineers in the Orknet, uh, the, uh, the subsidiary. So a summary, we provide two different solutions the first solution is the ML APIs. You can start using those APIs from now, so because it doesn't require any machine learning expertise. You can just upload your images, audio. Another solution is TensorFlow and the various cloud the products that uh, provides the one-stop ML solutions to build your customized machine learning solutions. So TensorFlow works with the other cloud products such as the Cloud DataFlow, ML Engine, BigQuery, CrowdStretch, to build the whole solutions. And of course, you can still continue to use the, uh, the industry standard tools such as NumPy or Scikit-Rhyme uh, or about Proxy. So that's it. Thank you so much.